Hello and welcome to the Bible with Prisco 2021. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shandor Prisco. Today we're going to be reading Leviticus 13 and Matthew 26, 26 through 50. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all say, Amen. Serious Skin Diseases Leviticus 13 The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If any woman has a self-swelling or a rash or discolored age, discolored skin that might develop into a serious disease, that person must be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of his sons. The priest will examine the affected area of the skin. If the hair in the affected area has turned white and the problem appears to be more than skin deep, it is a serious skin disease and the priest who examines it must pronounce the person ceremonially unclean. But if the affected area of the skin is only a white discoloration and does not appear to be more than skin deep, and if the hair on the spot has not turned white, the priest will quarantine the person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest will make another examination. If he finds the affected area has not changed and the problem has not spread on the skin, the priest will quarantine the person for um, seven days more. On the seventh day, the priest will make another examination. If he finds the affected area has faded and has not spread, the priest will pronounce the person ceremonially clean. It was only a rash. The person's clothing must be washed and the person will be ceremonially clean. But if the rash continues to spread after the person has been examined by the priest and has been pronounced clean, the infected person must return to be examined again. If the priest finds that the rash has spread, he must pronounce the person ceremonially unclean, for it is indeed a skin disorder. Disease Anyone who develops a serious skin disease must go to the priest for an examination. If the priest finds a white swelling on the skin and some hair on the spot has turned white and there is an open sore in the affected area, it is a chronic skin disease and the priest must pronounce the person ceremonially unclean. In such cases, the person must not be quarantined, for it is obvious the skin is defiled by the disease. Now, suppose the disease has spread all over the person's skin, covering the body from head to foot. When the priest examines the infected person and finds that the disease covers the entire body, he will pronounce the person ceremonially clean, since the skin has turned completely white. The person is clean, but if anyone's open sore appears, the infected person will be pronounced ceremonially unclean. The priest must make this pronouncing pronounce this pronouncement as soon as he sees an open sore, since open sores indicate the presence of a skin disease. However, if the open sore heal and turn white, like the rest of the skin, the person must return to the priest for another examination. If the affected areas have indeed turned white, the priest will then pronounce the person ceremonially clean by declaring, you are clean. If anyone has a boil on the skin that has started to heal, but a white swelling or a reddish white spot develops on that place, and that person must go to the priest to be examined. If the priest examines it and finds it to be more than skin deep, and if the hair on it, the affected area, has turned white, the priest must pronounce the person ceremonially unclean. The boil has become a serious skin disease. But if the priest finds no white hair on the affected area, 
and the problem appears to be no more than skin deep and has faded, the priest must quarantine the person for seven days. If during that time the affected area spreads on the skin, the priest must pronounce that person ceremonially unclean because it is a serious disease. But if the area grows no larger and does not spread, it is merely the scar from the boil, and the priest will pronounce the, that person ceremonially clean. If anyone has suffered a burn on the skin and the burnt area changes colors, becoming either reddish white or shiny white, the priest must examine it. If he finds that the hair in the affected area has turned white and the problem appears to be more than skin deep, a skin disease has broken out in the burn. The priest must then pronounce the person ceremonially unclean, for it is clearly a skin disease. But if the priest finds no white hair on the affected area, and the problem appears to be no more than skin deep, and has faded, the priest must quarantine the infected person for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest must examine the person again. If the affected area has spread on the skin, the priest must pronounce the, that person ceremonially unclean. For it is clearly a serious skin disease. But if the affected area has not changed or spread on the skin and has faded, it is simply a swelling from the burn. The priest must pronounce the person ceremonially clean for it is only a scar from the burn. If anyone, either a woman or a man, has a sore on the hand or chin, head or chin, the priest must examine it. If he finds it is more than skin deep and has fine yellow hair on it, the priest must pronounce the person ceremonially unclean. It is a scabby sore of the head or chin. If the priest examines the scabby sore and finds that it is only skin deep but there is no black hair on it, it must be quarantined the person for seven days and on the seventh day the priest must examine the sore again. If he finds that the per scabby sore has not spread and there is no yellow hair on it, and it appears to be only skin deep, the person must shave off all hair except the hair on the affected area. Then the priest must quarantine the person for another seven days. On the seventh day, he will be examined in the sore again. If it has not spread and appears to be no more than skin deep, the priest will pronounce the person ceremonially clean. The person's clothing must be washed, and the person will be ceremonially clean. But if the scabby sore begins to spread after the person is pronounced clean, the priest must do another examination. If he finds that the sore has spread, the priest does not need to look for yellow hair. The infected person is ceremonially unclean. <laughs> But if the color of the scabby sore does not change and black hair has grown on it, it has healed, and the priest will then pronounce the person ceremonially clean. If anyone, either a man or a woman, has shiny white patches on the skin, the priest must examine the affected area. If he finds that the shiny patches are only pale white, this is a harmless skin rash, and the person is ceremonially clean. If a man loses his hair and his head becomes bald, he is still un ceremonially unclean. If it has lost hair on his forehead, he simply has a bald forehead. If he is still clean. However, if a reddish 
white sore appears on the bald area on top of his head or on his forehead, this is a skin disease. The priest must examine him, and if he finds swelling around the reddish white sore anywhere on the man's head, and it looks like a skin disease, the man is indeed infected with a skin disease and is unclean. The priest must pronounce him ceremonially unclean because of the sore on his head. Those who suffer from a serious skin disease must tear their clothing and leave their hair uncombed. They must cover their mouth and call out unclean, unclean, as long as the serious skin disease lasts. They will be ceremonially unclean. They must live in isolation in their place outside the camp. Treatment of Contaminated Clothing Now, suppose mildew contaminates some woolen or linen clothing, woolen or linen fabric. The, the hide of an animal or anything made of leather. If the contaminated area in the clothing, in the animal hide, in the fabric, or the leather articles has turned greenish or reddish, it is contaminated with mildew and must be shown to the priest. After examining the affected spot, the priest will put the article in quarantine for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest must inspect it again. If the contaminated area has spread, the clothing or fabric or leather is clearly contaminated by a serious mildew and is ceremonially unclean. The priest must burn the item, the clothing, the wool, or linen fabric, or piece of leather. For it has been served a contaminated, contaminated by a serious mildew. It must be completely destroyed by fire. But if the priest examines it and finds that the contaminated area has not spread in the clothing, fabric, or leather, the priest will order the object to be washed and then quarantined for seven more days. And then the priest must examine the object again. If he finds that the ceremony that the contaminated area has not changed color after being washed even if it did not spread, the object is defiled and it must be completely burned up whether the contaminated spot on is on the inside or the outside. But if the priest examines it and finds that the contaminated area has faded after being washed, he must cut the spot from the clothing or the fabric or the leather. If the spot later reappears on the clothing, the fabric or the leather article, the mildew is clearly spreading and the contaminated object must be burned up. But if the spot disappears from the clothing, the fabric, or the leather article after it has been washed, it must be washed again. Then it will be ceremonially clean. These are the instructions for dealing with mildews that contain, contaminate woolen or linen cloth or fabric or anything made of leather. This is how the priest will determine whether these items are ceremonially clean or unclean. That was Leviticus 13. Now we'll be turning to Matthew 26, 26 through 50. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in peace, pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat of it. For this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he gave it to them and said, Each of you drink it. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. If it is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many, Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new 
with you in my father's kingdom. And then they sung a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus predicts Peter's denial. On the way, Jesus told them, Tonight all of you will desert me, for the scriptures say God will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared, Even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you even knew me. No, Peter said, he insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples bowed the same. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, Sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray, so that you will not give in to temptation, for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My father, this, if this cup cannot be taken away, unless I drink it, your will will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them asleep for they could not keep their eyes open. So he went out to pray a third time, saying the same thing again. And then he came to the disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my brothers, betrayed Look, my brother's betrayer is here. Jesus is betrayed and arrested. And even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests and elders of the people. The traitor Judas has, had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. So Judas came straight to Jesus. In greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed and gave him the kiss. And Jesus said, My friends, go ahead and do what you have come to do, and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. Okay. That was the Matthew 26, 26 through 50, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2021 for today. Tomorrow we'll be reading um, Leviticus 14 and Matthew 26, 51 through 75. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. So, in Jesus' mighty name, I thank you and praise you and give you all the glory and all the honor. And amen. And they all said, Amen. Thank you, folks, for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. For today, um, I, uh, Shango Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you.
and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow, because, well, hey, we'll be here, and I hope that you are too.